Kevin Majors, uh, Dr. Kevin Majors, is a lecturer in psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, uh, where he trains psychiatry residents and medical students in behavioral therapy at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. He has developed a not-for-profit mentoring program in Cambridge that focuses on helping college students achieve peak performance in their studies by applying the latest cognitive and behavioral approaches. He has also founded an educational website overcomingcravings.com to help people understand the cognitive behavioral approach to treating addictions. Kevin also has a private practice located in Cambridge. Kevin, how can we help millennials to enjoy working at their best and for the best motives? Well, thank you, Danilo, and thank you, Manuel, for having me here. And it's, it's really a great joy to be with these panelists, and I look forward to our future conversation. I'd start by saying that I think the strength of millennials is their capacity for high ideals, that they are interested in making the world a better place, mm -hmm. they're interested in serving, they're interested in loving. And maybe the pitfalls that they face are that, one, they often don't know how to handle anxiety. Mm -hmm. So anxiety disorders are on the rise, and in my clinical practice, that's primarily what I treat. The other is distractedness. So I'm being able to you know, achieve high levels of focus. And the other is what goes into those is sometimes a reluctance to face challenge. Now, but I want to show how their capacity for high ideals will actually help them with those three things. So in my practice, in my mentoring, and as a therapist, and as a teacher, the most profound positive changes come when I help students to focus on their very way of working. The mode of working, what does it mean for them to focus at their highest level. At its best, work does embody ideals and sets us free from the control of impulses and distractions. Work channels adrenaline into excitement rather than anxiety and teaches us how to rise to any challenge. I think that everything really hinges on work. So the way we work is the way we live. So, and by improving the very way of working and learning how to bring ideals into that, we become the best version of ourselves. So I teach students, and I would teach you all right now actually, the, if you want to be achieving your highest level of focus, here's a simple model that will do that. Think of it as ready, set, go. <laughs> Before you start the task you're about to do, Ready means that you ask yourself if you're viewing the task as a threat or as an opportunity. And reframing is the skill by which you consciously come to see it as an opportunity. An opportunity for growth, an opportunity for practice, ultimately an opportunity for ideals. Set means that you settle your mind. You let yourself become more mindful. Neurologically, this turns off the default mode network, which is the origin of repetitive intrusive thoughts that are actually the source of distractions. So distractedness is directly addressed by teaching people to recognize when they're getting distracted and to refocus in the present moment. And to learn to do that then until your attention has settled in the task and you're ready for step three, which is go. You set off in the challenge. So you try to have a very specific task with a specific time limit, something that will call forth intensity. What you're trying to do is, one, get yourself out of threat mode you know, by reframing and by being mindful, you activate what's called the parasympathetic nervous system, and that is what allows for singular focus. And then the challenge step is how you get adrenaline to help you. Ideals set the stage for all of that. So the first step called reframing is also called cognitive reappraisal. And that is a deliberate act of considering how what you're facing right now is an opportunity for some kind of growth or practice. And I would invite you even right now to be thinking of a task that you have coming up that you might be dreading or something that you're complaining about internally. Complaining and dreading are habits of negative appraisal that make the higher levels of attention unattainable. So no one can focus at their best when they're complaining or dreading. So if you're thinking specifically of a thing that you might be dreading, and then you ask yourself, what is the virtue or skill 
that would make that challenge easy for me? What is this giving you a very kind of privileged opportunity to practice? In work, that will often be achieving work itself with order, with intensity, with constancy, with creativity. So you, you approach the task as an opportunity to practice those qualities. <coughs> All of this applies then even more than work into your ordinary lives as um, in your family relationships, your social relationships. Is there any person that you are reluctant to deal with? Is there, are there someone you would dread being with or complain when you're with them? To think what then is the precise thing I could be practicing while I'm with them? How could I instead see that as an opportunity to, to be more interested, engaging, loving, patient, kind? And so when people learn how to reframe and build, and you could say set the stage for very high quality work, they are simultaneously learning how to set the stage for virtue in any activity, in any setting. So work is the hinge on which everything turns. Work is the ultimate training ground for virtue. Thank <laughs> you.